President Biden is scheduled to deliver a primetime speech tonight on the threat to U.S. democracy posed by the extremist right. Last week, Biden described the Trump wing of the Republican Party as semi-fascist. We don't have too many details on what Biden plans to say later this evening, but it would be a mistake to describe this threat to democracy as something new that came about only with the rise of Trump. It's the same threat that's long been perverting U.S. democracy, the influence of wealthy capitalists on our elections, something Democrats used to rail against, but have since accepted as they built their own wealthy donor networks. Now, it is true that capitalist funders on the right, though, have gone full mask off in their embrace of reactionary politics. For example, the leader of the Senate Republicans has now been placing frantic calls to a fascist tech billionaire begging him to spend more money to help the right take control of the upper chamber. Washington Post reported that Mitch McConnell is growing concerned about the GOP's chances to retake the Senate with extremist candidates running in Ohio and Arizona. So he's been calling up Peter Thiel. Thiel is one of the co-founders of PayPal. He also started the data and private surveillance firm Palantir, which assisted the NSA's global spying operations. And he's a major funder of the libertarian right and backer of former President Donald Trump. Thiel spoke at the 2016 Republican National Convention, and there was reporting that at one time Trump wanted to nominate Thiel to the Supreme Court. He's also the guy who bankrolled the lawsuit that put an end to Gawker because he didn't like the site's reporting. Thiel invested heavily in the primary runs of far-right dipshits J.D. Vance in Ohio and Blake Masters in Arizona, both guys who previously worked at Thiel's investment firm and hold what can best be described as militant right-wing nationalist politics. They've advanced white supremacist ideas around the Great Replacement Theory, the idea that white people are being replaced in the country, and they've used eliminationist rhetoric against the LGBTQ plus community. Thiel's money helped propel Vance and Masters into the general election, but to the dismay of Mitch McConnell, Thiel doesn't want to spend more money in the races. Here's how the Post reported on it, quote, After J.D. Vance won the Republican primary for Senate in Ohio, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell called Peter Thiel, the billionaire investor who had pumped $15 million into a super PAC backing Vance, to congratulate him but also to make a request. Since McConnell's resources were limited, The senator said, would Thiel continue to finance Vance through the general election? Thiel reportedly declined, so the McConnell-linked PAC known as the Senate Leadership Fund started pouring its own money into the race to support Vance. But then after Masters won in Arizona, McConnell realized his campaign war chest wasn't big enough to cover both races. From the Post, quote, McConnell told Thiel over the phone last week that Vance's race in Ohio was proving more costly for the Senate Leadership Fund than anticipated, that money was not unlimited, and that there was a need for the billionaire to come in in a big way in Arizona. According to a person familiar with the conversation, it adds, quote, the message from McConnell and Law, the guy who runs McConnell's fundraising operation, according to people with knowledge of their pitch, was that they should essentially split the cost, with Teal cutting a check to their super PAC matching whatever funds they put behind Masters. Both the Ohio and Arizona Senate races are considered toss-ups, with polling showing that Teal's extremist candidates are only trailing their Democratic opponents, Tim Ryan and incumbent Senator Mark Kelly, by just a couple points. Both seats are critical to GOP hopes of winning back the Senate, And the fact that a single billionaire might be able to tip the scales here, or at least the most powerful Republican in the Senate thinks so, is proof of what a sham U.S. democracy is right now. That's not to downplay the right's assault on free elections and its use of non-democratic means to seize power, like violence and fraud. Things can always get worse. But it is kind of like a mobster with a baseball bat saying, nice car you got there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. And the car is like a 1998 Chevy Malibu with 300,000 miles on it. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, if you want to see Means Morning News in its complete form, not just the clips we post here, 
Head on over to Means TV and get access to all our new episodes and our entire backlog, plus tons of other great movies and original TV shows.